Hello, welcome to the 12th tutorial. This one will be on data. A couple things we need to look at here. First, just plotting or visualizing our data. And the second will be on finding models that fit our data. So let's come back up first and work on the visualization. But I'm going to create some data here, in fact, a list of points to deal with. I'm going to call it one list, just giving it a name. And I'm going to use table. And basically, I'm looking at ordered pairs um, with x comma 2 plus sine of x. So that's my basic function. But I'm going to add random real here uh, to my y values. That will add a real number between 0 and 1. And that just effectively makes my function messier. I'm going to look at values of x from 0 to 6 by steps of 0.4. So let me input that. And I'm going to come down here and plot this. Simplest command, list plot. And I get my values in there. OK. And please note that with this random reel, if I came up and re-input that um, table, recreate that table, and then come down here, I will, in fact, get different data each time I do it. All right, now a couple options, plot style we can add. Point size, I can change that. I can also change the color. So I'm going to put that in. Now, you'll see I also have another option here with axis origin. In this case, it doesn't make any difference. My graph up here looks about the same as that one in terms of the axes. In certain cases, though, it will be a little disconcerting, especially to students, if you see the x and y axes really just close to your data, which makes lots of sense. You don't want your axes too far off and your data just in one little corner of your graph. But sometimes this can be very helpful just to reorient students a little bit. OK, so in this case, it didn't make a difference. Just wanted you to see that couple options in here and a different command I'm going to put in instead of list plot list line plot just joins all the ordered pairs together with lines um, plot style I can go back to thick which I used for graphs because this has line segments and red again but just to give us a different view to this okay little exercise here putting the exercises within each section in this case all right, so first I'm going to define a function, um, a of n equals cosine of n. OK, I'm going to put that in. Then I'm going to create a table of ordered pairs from 1 to 50. All right, so let's do that. How about just my table? I'm just going to name that very simply. and table here that I want my ordered pairs n comma a of n. I don't use need to use n. I'm just thinking about that because I'm going to put in integers in this case. But any variable will do. And n goes from 1 to 50. Default step size is uh, 1. So that's all I want right now. Now, when I put this in, oh, I get all these exact values. I'm looking at cosine of 1 radian, cosine of 2 radians, cosine of 3 radians. They're not particular nice values in particular. So yes, I can put in some numerical work here. Though in this case, it really doesn't make too much difference because I don't know what that looks like anyway. So I can put an n around here. I can also very simply just come over here and put a decimal point in. Oh, decimals in, decimals out. OK, but again, that still doesn't really help me see what this looks like. So we're going to come down here and use list plot. And I want my table as all I'm looking at here. And um, yeah, that's enough for right now. OK, and I kind of get this mess of points. Well, I should have expected that. Just to play with this a little bit, instead of going up to 50, I'm going to go up to 300 in this case. And let me redo those values. Well, I don't need to see all that. Let me put a semicolon in, redo that. It will just suppress those values because I don't really care what they look like. Um, and now let me come in here. I'm also 
I just redo this, I get some kind of things that look like patterns around here, except that these really aren't because if you're looking in the points one right after the other, as they should be numerically, they don't follow any pattern, but it almost looks like they do. If I come in here and I'm going to add aspect ratio and one third, I just think it's kind of cute to look at. We can make that a little bit larger so you can see it. And again, the points, if I look at them in order as they would be as n increases, they're just jumping all over the place between negative one and one. But in this case, you do seem to see these nice little patterns coming along here. I just think it's interesting. All right, next section, finding models. So, some data, lovely. I just put stuff in here this time that we can play with. All right. Um, I'm going to use, I want to use list plot to look at this, but first I'm going to name this too and put in medium sized dots. Hmm. Okay, now I have a sense of what this looks like. Cubic seems reasonable. Here's one fairly easy command. I'm going to call this function one, is the function I get out of this. Fit, some data, that's my list of points above. And here's a list of functions, and I'm going to create a linear combination of those functions. In other words, um, a constant times one plus a constant times x plus a constant times x squared, etc. And then finishing this off with x as my variable. And I get my cubic. All right, now I want to graph that. So I'm going to call this graph one and just plot this. Here's my function one because this came out in a very nice form and going from zero to six. Okay, well, I've got blue dots and I've got a blue graph. We're going to change that a little bit. So let me come in here and put in plot style and let's use red. Okay. So that's renaming my graph one now. Okay. Um, I want to put these together. We have different types of graphics. There's a plot and a list plot. I need to use the show command. But that's the reason I wanted to name these. So this is very easy to do right here. Okay, not great, but not bad. Let's come on down and work this a little bit more. Function two, trying something else here. Still using my fit commands, same data, but here I'm creating a linear combination of one, sine x, and cosine x, and again with x as my variable. Okay. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. So I want to come in here. I'm going to name this graph, oops, graph two and equals plot, sorry, plot and we want func two. And I'm going to do that as um, x goes from sorry, zero up to six, close that off, and I'm going to change the color in this point, so plot style, um, let's use green. Okay, got that. And then we'll put those two together. So I'm going to be a little bit cheap here. I'm going to go back up, show, grab that, copy it, come down here and put that in, except I don't want graph one, I want graph two, edit, put that in. Oh, that looks better than my first function, my cubic. All right, so we're good there. Let's do something else in this case. A different command using find fit, same data, and here I'm putting in the function I'm interested in. So this is going to be a genu general sinusoidal curve. Here are my variables. Uh-oh, I can see that A is colored differently. That's because I defined it above and I didn't clear it. So we're going to clear A right now. Good thing. And then that will change to blue, as I can see it here. So 
the Wolfram language, my computer does not know what A is. So I'm looking at a genu general sinusoidal curve. Here are my four parameters, and then X as my variable. So when I do this, I now get my four parameters. Well, this comes out in a very different form because up above, I had my function ready to play with, but I can still get back to my function. Here I'm going to name it function 3, my general sinusoidal graph, slash dot, that's for replacement, and now I'm going to replace it with my last output that has all these values that are going to be put in there. Now, that looks like a function I can work with. That's now my func3 in here. So let me come in and um, plot func3. And we want to go as x goes from, oops, 0 up to 6. And then I'm going to use a plot style in here. And let's use cyan. OK. So we want to see what that looks like. OK. Still kind of looks like the others. And oh, I want to name that, too. How about graph 3? You know, you forget these things at times. But let me put in graph 3 equals and name that along with func3 so that's fine right now and now i can work on show let me come back now we'll just do that here okay let me show i have um graph data and i have um sorry graph one, we'll use that, and graph two, and graph three. We can put that in. If I put all of these in together, yes, some of that was stored in here before, you'll notice. And, well, my sinusoidal graph didn't look so good at that point. That's okay. But I still like that green one the best. All right. That gives you a very brief introduction, and of course, there is lots more that one can do with data and modeling, but hope this gets you started. Thank you.